Our inspectors are all over the world and they're safeguarding various facilities uh, across the entire nuclear fuel cycle from uh, the very beginning where the uranium is being converted to the point at the end of the fuel cycle, cycle where we've got actual uh, uh, reprocessing of the, of the spent nuclear fuel to separate the uranium and plutonium. And throughout these different facilities, our inspectors are collecting samples. The main role of this laboratory is to receive the samples and to process the samples so that we can get them in a form of, uh, to measure. And then we measure basically the uranium and the plutonium contents of the samples and the isotopic composition of the uranium and plutonium in order to help the agency verify the declared quantities of nuclear material from the facilities that the samples were collected from. We receive nuclear materials from all points of the nuclear fuel cycle. This means coming from almost the point that the uranium is extracted from the ground to the point in a reprocessing plant when the plutonium has been separated from the spent fuel and everything in between. So we're getting samples, for instance, in this plutonium laboratory of plutonium samples or plutonium and uranium mixed samples coming from reprocessing plants. And this is extremely important because the agency needs to confirm that plutonium stays in the civilian nuclear fuel cycle and is not being used for any other purposes other than peaceful purposes. In the uranium laboratory, which is across the hall, we're getting samples that basically are from the front end of the fuel cycle, have not been in the reactor, and we're checking those samples to make sure that none of the uh, enrichments have been falsified or that none of the material, the quantity of material that's been checked has been diverted for any purpose uh, uh, that might be for military use. There are many ways that a proliferator could actually divert nuclear material for making a nuclear weapon. And one of the ways that they could do it is by taking a small quantity of this material over a long period of time, which would be very hard to determine uh, by an inspector by just item counting or by using handheld uh, measurement systems. Now, the beauty of this laboratory is that we have um, processes and measurement systems in place that have very high precision and accuracy for measurement of uranium and plutonium. And so by collecting samples from certain material balance areas, we can determine whether this small diversion, we call it a bias defect, we can determine whether a bias defect has taken place or not because of the high precision and high accuracy of our measurement systems.